Yeah, basically get to the bottom of what we're doing. All right, so two, for our professionals, for all the professionals out there, now, like I said, this is not no disrespect to people who are doing tarot or basic forms of reading at all. Please, let's get that clear. I'm just, this video is for people who don't, who are not diviners and who really need insight into spirituality and help. And I'm drawing a line in the sand because some of y'all who know y'all ain't right. So, in that sense, I am speaking to you. And I don't have no problem saying it because we got to get to the next level in our cultural community, all right? So let's go. Now, a professional, a professional diviner, reader, channeler, oracle, priest or priestess, right? Somebody who's been doing spiritual work readings over a year, way over a year. Most people spend 10 years learning how to divine. I mean, seriously, this is no joke, y'all. 10 years. Some I know brothers and sisters right now who've been divining for years. I mean, they put in work to, to understand that because it's a lot of things that come behind knowing how to read. For one, it's a natural gift. And then, two, it could be a form of curse. So, therefore, it's not an easy task like people think. It's easier than just pulling the deck. And, no, no, it's way more than that. All right? Also, um... You know, professionals been through a lot of training, trial, tribulations, <laughs> training about what they doing. Once again, you can't be in the spiritual. This is my 10th year in spirituality, going on 11 come 2017. And I still have elders that's been just doing divining alone just for 10 years. You see what I'm saying? So people, you know, when it comes to that art, it takes a long time to do certain things. Uh-huh. Now. Um, another point for a professional, professional, they can help you pass the reading, you know, so let's say anything happened from that reading that it was a good omen or a bad omen, regardless of which one it is, they can help you. We can help you and you should listen and follow the advice that's given. Go through the whole process if you should trust them or not and all that so you can really feel comfortable. That's why I tell people, go to my fan page and look at the reviews. And I ask people I work with, please post comments so people know this is some real deal stuff. All right. Uh, most people need a professional is versed in many forms of magic. He, they can channel and they, they're accountable for what they do. See, right now, my elders will probably be watching this video and they make sure I'm accountable for what I do. Good people will be accountable and have to be responsible in all of our upbringing because it's all one. We all one family. We do readings and oracles for the entire community as a household, as a family, as a business, as a village. You see what I'm saying? So it's the same thing. We really one big family. Okay. Um, and then an oracle a diviner can, can understand and know when to use certain readings and when not. Things like that. They know how to navigate the spiritual world and do many things. So it's a whole nother level. Um than than what we think all right so um i mean I, I that's why i don't understand why people you just like you just got an oracle reading or tell reading and now you doing readings for somebody else and it's like okay that's cool for practice but let it be known and be clear that you're not a professional you might want to still get that message and get it approved and backed up with someone else or just to kind of follow up, you know, because we have to understand, even as a professional, you, it's a form of investigation that comes along with those readings. You don't just, you know, I might pull out an oracle and find out your spirit, but we still need to be investigating to know more. It's not the end game. Reading is just opens you up to the next level and figure and gives you the answers you need to for the situation you're in. All right. So that's pretty much it on those two things. Just covering the, you know, what a reading is, section one, section two, uh, the amateur, section three, the professional, and I'm gonna hit section um, four, and we're gonna talk about the money aspect of it. Now, a lot of people feel some type of way because people charge for readings, and let's be clear, don't feel no type of way because you in a society. First of all, you in you're in a capitalistic society, so you getting taxed. 
you work, you getting taxed, and, and you spending. So let's not complain about anybody, even if they're amateur, asking for a donation about anything. Now, for the professionals, right, these individuals have been studying this stuff for years. They've, they've done it their self. That's why they're able to even do it for you. Write that down. You know what I'm saying? So if I ask you, hey, well, you know, my, like my consultations are this much. But if you don't have that, then make a donation because I don't want it to seem like it's just about the money. We want to still get to the spiritual business and the mission that we're doing. But you still got to pay. Why? Because all knowledge ain't free. And stop thinking that all knowledge is free. And when I look at a lot of these Facebook groups and a lot of these social media things, it's like everybody, a lot of people, just want stuff for free. I mean, now I have, I want stuff for free too. I want my rent to be free. I want my spiritual work to be free. I want my candles to be free. I want my crystals to be free. I want all that to be free. But that's not the reality. So don't, don't get upset when I charge you and ask you for a donation because of the work I've put in for years. But you'll go spend money on Amazon and, and at these shops that some quote-unquote devil, European or whatever, you know, it owns it and it's, and it's nothing. And it ain't even circling in our community. You see what I'm saying? So we got to really understand what we're talking about. You know what I'm saying? And, and let's be honest, the real reason why most people feel like knowledge, they shouldn't have to pay for knowledge is because of the lack there of money. And that's okay. You know what I'm saying? People are struggling and that's fine. But we still got to pay. All knowledge, you just, I guarantee you, if you go to even even some of these master teachers, Dr. Sabi, you know, who, who, whoever you have, you, you need to pay for them products. You don't just pull from Mother Earth and not exchange and give nothing from Mother Earth. You see what I'm saying? Everything is given and exchange in life. And that's just, these are some basic things. We need the money needs to be circulated within our community five to seven times before it even leaves our community. We're going through an economic crisis. So first of all, the a priest or the spiritualist shouldn't even be working the job. First and foremost, traditionally, the holy man and woman should not even be working. They should be doing the work for the people. You see what I'm saying? But nowadays, the people don't support the people. The people don't support single mothers. The people don't support these elders. And that's why they've fallen off. And that's a darn shame. Okay? But we're going to get past this. This is for the people who really, really want to know. You know, like I said, priests have priest studied for years. Okay, another point about the payment is that most people don't know spirit world, let's say like, for example, let's use Eshu. Eshu, a leg while, you've learned about any Fai Odu that, that if I Odu speaks about that this person should, the, the priest should charge for divination. Because wealth can also be a form of protection. Charging and having wealth could keep you away from a lot of BS. But it speaks about in Ifa in the, in the Orisha tradition that how Eshu demands payment from the people that's doing the work. It's a giving exchange. You see what I'm saying? Because it's the form and science of alchemy. Not physical dollars. We're not saying that spirits are saying Oh, you need to pay this amount of money. It's the form of symbolic exchange. You feel the art of equivalent exchange. <laughs> you know, if I'm an alchemist out there. You see what I'm saying? So this is what we're doing. And a lot of times, okay, I we divine and say, okay, well, should we charge this much? Yes or no. Should we charge that much? Yes or no. You see what I'm saying? To get to make sure spiritually we're not overcharging or undercharging. Because you have to understand wealth is a real spirit. Wealth is a real Orisha. Wealth is a real entity. Wealth is a real netaru. You see what I'm saying? So let's go. Now the last part. Um, um, yeah. This next last section would just kind of be touching about the tarot. Now, this tarot business has been getting way out of hand. I mean way out of hand. First of all, if you go to any major bookstore and stuff like this, a lot of this stuff in these bookstores, these spells, and all this stuff these folks posting, half that shit don't even work no more. You know what I'm saying? And I had to learn that shit the hard way from my elders. Go look, go listen to some of the elders 
on YouTube and find out. And they'll tell you. Don't believe me. I'm going to edify and show you what the elders say. A lot of them stuff in the books that don't even work. That's why they out there in the first place. You see what I'm saying? So you got to understand that.